All right, here's a continuation in our series on renewable energy. And now I'd like to talk about hydrokinetics, which is the name implies hydro meaning water, kinetics meaning motion. So you have water in motion, and you're going to be extracting the energy out of that moving water. Now, let's start off with the recognition that there are different ways of doing this, just simply because we have different types of moving water around our planet. We have rivers. So what we've been doing for a hundred years or so is damming them up and then extracting the energy from that water when it's released. There are ecologic problems with that and we no longer want to do that. So, but we're still interested in the, the all that energy that's stored and released, uh, whether it's used or not, as a river rolls downhill. So here you have what's referred to a run of river hydro. So you, you find a way of extracting that energy from that water without damming it up. So that's number one. Number two is tidal. So for instance, the moon, the orbit of the moon around the earth causes massive amounts of water to move from one place to another. We're very interested in extracting that. There's also wave. Um, so for, because the wind blows, we have waves that go up and down. Lot, there's a huge amount of energy uh, in waves as they go up and down, crash into things and so forth that we would love to extract. And there's also ocean currents. So, for instance, um, you know, I'm originally from the east coast of the United States, and I noticed that it was very, the warmest water off the New Jersey uh, shore was actually not in July when you thought it would be, but at the end of September because of the Gulf Stream moving its way north. So huge and very predictable um, currents in the ocean. So what, what to like about this thing? Well, number one, it's not that intermittent. The Gulf Stream, is an ex as I say, is an extremely predictable event. Um, rivers are somewhat seasonal, but when you look at something the size of the Mississippi River or whatever, um, it, it's not like the wind blowing, starting and stopping, or the sun shining and then nightfall. So it's, they're not too intermittent. Obviously, there's no fuel involved. It's an extremely clean type of a thing. Here's what not to like about this. Number one is that there's always in, there's some level of ecologic impact into anything you do. We talk about all these things as being clean, and they are relative to coal or what have you, but there's no free lunch associated with this. Anytime, and especially when you talk about um, hydrokinetics, anytime you insert a device into moving water, well, that's a habitat for some life forms, aquatic animals, um, so, for instance, whenever you do that, it, that's changing that habitat. And th this is particularly true in the case of hydrokinetics. Um, the other issue on this thing is, is survivability. So you put something in moving water, is it going to rust? Is it going to float away? Is it, you know, you put it in salt water, you're multiplying your problems. Um, there, there are 15, the guy I interviewed for my first book on this subject in hydrokinetics identified, and we were speaking for an hour and a half, identified 15 different survivability issues um, associated with what happens when you put something in moving water. So largely referred to as biofouling. So for instance, barnacles growing on something would be an example. So another thing to be concerned about this is that this is not infinitely abundant. Obviously the sun is going to be shining. We, we, we receive 6,000 times more sun every day from the earth than all 7 billion of us consume. But that's not the case with hydrokinetics and in particular run of river. When you figure out exactly how much energy you have in the case of all the rivers in the United States, as an example, it's not as much energy as we're using. It can make an important contribution, but it's not infinite as we f tend to think of as the sun. And, uh, another example of this, of course, would be tides. The tides are greatest in at the very high latitude. So if you're in Alaska, you get huge amounts of tidal energy. If you're near the equator, you get very little. So it's an interesting type of thing. But anyway, the fact that it's so clean is extremely interesting to all of us. And I would look for a lot more use of hydrokinetics as the years go by.